Rob Grimes with the IFBTA, and today I'm really pleased to be joined by Luke Fryer, the CEO and founder of Harry. They are a global industry supplier member, and welcome, Luke. Rob, it's a pleasure to be here. So this is a long time coming, this conversation. I always love getting to talk with you, and I've gotten to know you over time, but I'm not so sure a lot of our audience and our members have actually gotten to know you, so this is our opportunity to do that. Um, one of the interesting things that I like to know about, and especially for you, is what was the idea behind Harry? Did you? How did you actually get inspired? Well, so I've, I've been a, an, a, an owner and operator in the restaurant world for, I guess, 1,320 years or something. Um, but literally since 1999, I had the first Burger King franchise in Australia. Um, moved over to New York in 2007 and started hiring. I had a, started a small restaurant business and started hiring. And Craigslist was the only game in town. And it was it was really difficult to hire on Craigslist. And after you know opening a few restaurants and going through this for a couple of years, I uh, was you know when I moved here, I was 30 and single and you know, doing what you do as a 30 year old single guy in New York and uh, you know potentially using things like Match.com. And it just occurred to me that there had to be a better way to hire. And potentially you could take this, you know, dating marketplace concept. And instead of boy meets girl, you could make that look more like candidate meets employer. And if we really focused in on the needs of the restaurant use case, um, you could come up with something pretty cool. So the first version of Harry was actually a talent marketplace that was almost a, a, a frame by frame copy of Match.com. Um, but we launched that business in you know, midway through 2013, um, and it, it, it became very successful very quickly. We got lots of great brands. We got lots of candidates. We connected lots of jobs and lots of people. But we, we quickly learned the problem was not you know, making those matches. It was the time it took to manage the hiring process. And we would deliver 100 candidates to, to one of our clients they'd put them through their applicant tracking system and 98% of people would drop out. It took too long to fill out an application, too long to schedule an interview. The managers had to work too hard. You know, it was just, it was a difficult process. And it was really that hiring process that was the, pro it was the hiring process, not the hiring marketplace that was the problem that we were facing as an industry. So we actually pivoted from being a marketplace business to a software business to focus on solving that hiring process challenge. But you stayed in the marketplace. You stayed in the restaurant marketplace, right? That's absolutely. I mean you know, I think the key's always been focus and, you know, the high volume, uh, the high volume nature of restaurant hiring and the need to understand the difference between, you know, the QSR and fast casual and, and, and casual dining and upscale and coffee shop, uh, you know, these all these segments of our industry actually need a particular approach. And we've always kept that focus to respect that approach. Um, and then, yeah, we launched, so we, we launched that software product in 2016 and, and really evolved from there, you know, initially focused on, on solving the hiring problem, but really our industry has a leaky bucket problem, not a hiring problem. Our turnover rates are so high, we're constantly hiring. And you know, we've evolved what we do to really focus on that retention challenge through, you know, how we better impact the day-to-day -day working lives of employees. And am, I, am I allowed to say that you have sort of an interesting timing factor here? I mean, nobody can predict the future. Maybe you can. But you started in hiring as the base because you saw a need for this. And yet our industry today, even though you've added all these other pieces, and you're talking about 2016, right? So who would have known, you know, that four years later... You know, we would have had something that would create, you know, chaos in the industry. And now we clearly have a hiring issue, even though that's where you start and you involved into other things. At your core root, you were solving a problem that even more so today is a huge problem. I mean, look, I think it's a long term cancer in the economics. It's, it's in the economics and the stability of the industry, right? I mean, the, there were very high turnover rates before the pandemic. I mean, I think, you know, if we, and, and my background has been quite heavily skewed to QSR. I mean, you know, we've been running 100, 130% turnover at an hourly employee level before the pandemic. Now that went up to, gosh, 150, 170%. But 
you know, there, there's always these numbers that float around, you know, it costs $1,500 to replace a minimum wage employee or 3000 I mean, pick whatever number you want. But as from an operator's perspective, I always looked and said, like, how much have I actually paid in wages to someone who's come and worked with me for a week or for a month and then just left? Because, like, I got zero productivity, right? In fact, I had to invest more time in terms of training or how long it took to hire the person or whatever. And when you sort of add those numbers up, it just becomes a... a so it's a, about hiring the right people in the first place. It's a little... It, it's... Look, it... Yeah, what's weight loss, right? Weight loss is really simple. You you kind of eat less calories and work out more and you lose weight. So um, <laughs> retention is really simple as well. You hire a little bit better and you especially focus on the early experience of the employee. Right? Just like with weight loss, easy to say, much harder to do. But um, yes, it's about hiring better. I think there's a lot of things we do that there's a lot of basic things we can do better in the hiring process, right? Well, so wait a minute, but you focused you focused on the food service restaurant marketplace. There were some competitors that did little bits and pieces of it. Maybe yep. they're not competitors because they weren't end to end and they certainly didn't have a focus in the space. So what is the secret sauce here in Harry that that makes you able to solve the weight loss problem? Because we know it's not as simple as that, you know. So, what is the secret sauce in there that makes you different from all the different parts and pieces? I, I think, look, the simple premise of being able to hire your team and manage your team in one place creates a a a, a single place to do things. It just makes things easier for managers. But I guess from the on the back end for us, it allows us to see and handle a huge amount of data that can start to bring intelligence into these processes. Um, and there is no silver bullet, right? It, it, there's no silver bullet in the hiring process. There's no silver bullet in the in, in the day-to-day -day workforce management process, you know, workflows either. It is about making consistent, incremental, intelligent gains on this that, that will allow us to attack this problem from a range of different angles. Um, and our, our, our secret source will continue to be industry focus because, again, the nuances we face are very different. You, know, you, you can't try and you know, understand all the, all, all the aspects of the employee experience and the employee life cycle for a restaurant company one day and then try and do the same thing for a, you know, a mining company or a, 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 you know, a tech company you know, the next day just very different workforces and you know the thing that characterizes the restaurant workforce look there's this whole world of frontline workforces but what characterizes restaurant workforces is really that key point of intersection between the business and the employee which is the schedule and if you look at why people leave in the first 90 days and and, and a more relevant measure in some parts of the industry is the first 30 days it's generally two-thirds of people leave in that short cycle period because they're not happy with their schedule. They say they don't like the manager. They say they're not making enough money, but it all comes back to the, it all ties back to the pattern or the number of hours they're getting and how that fits into their need to earn money or other things in their lives. Well, you've made a lot of headway, you know, since 2016. And I know there's a lot of room to grow, but you actually are exploring different areas that a lot of people haven't touched with a different approach. And the IFBTA is very happy uh, and lucky to have you as one of our key uh, global industry partners. And uh, it's been a pleasure, Luke, uh, Luke Fryer, the CEO and founder of Harry, to have you join us today. And welcome to the IFBTA. Thanks, Rob. It's a pleasure to be part of it.